What's up, Gang Count Nation? Tasha, I want to make a hit checking in, and you're about to hear the show presented by Express Sun's Rooms of Columbia. Spurs up. Time for Inside the Gamecocks, the show with Phil Mullinax and J.C. Sherber. So, how many of you would say you speak English fairly well, but with some difficulty? Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. You play to win the game. Now, let's take it away, J.C. and Phil. Inside the Gamecocks, the show... J.C. Sherbert here with Phil Molinax. How are you guys doing today? Happy MLK Day. Uh, for those of you that are off work, I already see that VJ is on a no work Monday. It's always good when you're off on a Monday, right? Uh, oh, yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all, unless you got, you know, everybody in the house uh, disrespecting the two hours you asked them to be quiet. Yeah, that's great, J.C. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, just the two hours, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, but we certainly uh, thank you guys uh, uh, for coming in. And, and certainly, you know, Martin Luther King Day is a day where I always kind of reflect uh, about the man he was uh, and the legacy that, that he uh, created in, in this country. I, I think the guy's a hero. Um, certainly there's a lot of discussion uh, about the topic of race and civil rights and stuff like that today, which we will avoid. Uh, but just... Uh, you know, I think sometimes God sends people, uh, you know, into the world uh, to make a difference. 
Um, and then when it's kind of done, it's kind of done. And unfortunately, it was, it was cut short much too soon. But God has a plan. And I think that, uh, you know, in remembrance of him, you know, do something peaceful and nice for someone today. I think peace and kindness and, and all that's what he preached. And uh, certainly I've tried to apply that to my own life. So uh, happy MLK Day to everyone else. Uh, recruiting weekend, recruiting rolls on these days. <laughs> it never stops. Uh, Gamecocks had some visitors in from the transfer portal. I don't know. I'm not sure Carolina's going to get some of these guys. I, you know, I think I, – I, Dylan Johnson, people sounded good about it earlier. I don't know about it right now. I think Malik McLean is probably going to Penn State. Um, Eddie Griffin, I think is his name, uh, from transfer from Memphis that was at Rutgers. Uh, he's visiting Colorado this weekend. Um, I think South Carolina feels pretty good about him, but Colorado's uh, got a nice budget. So, <laughs> and there's been a bunch of receivers that have gone out there uh, as it is, and they've got a good uh, offensive coordinator for sure. So, um, so there you go with that. I, I think that, um, you know, I, I shoot, I'd love for Carolina to sign Dylan Johnson. And, you know, sometimes you hear things uh, as it relates to NIL, uh, and then it gets resolved and worked out um, as far as, as the amount and things like that go. Uh, I know that happened with, with Jacob Simon, the kid from Sumter. Um, it looked like he was going to go to Michigan State, and then that didn't really work out. So uh, here he is at South Carolina. Um, but, you know, I think the game class will be fine. I told you about Trey John Jeffcoat, the defensive end from Missouri, uh, last Friday and also talked about it uh, on the thebigspur.com, and that thing is looking really good, and that's a very key player uh, for the Gamecocks. I, I think you needed uh, some sort of edge, right, um, vet prefer preferably a veteran, but a kid from Irmo that was all SEC at your division rival, man, I think that's about as good as you can get, you can get there, you know, uh, and also consider it's a very down year in, in the transfer portal. And, and I'll say this, uh, Jeff Coat did not mark, do not contact when he got in the portal. So other schools did, uh, my understanding is a lot of the name programs out there. Uh, and just because everybody needs edge players and they're just, you know, it's just one of those years. Sometimes, like in free agency, as as we move forward with the portal and all that, we'll start to understand that you know some years it'll be heavy and certain, just like recruiting. You know, some years it's a bad year at quarterback. Some years it's a good year at quarterback. There's usually always receivers, but sometimes the the, the cream of the crop busts. Um, and, and just like in the NFL, uh, this crop of free agents coming up, and I read this because the Bears miserably have a lot, a lot of cap space <laughs> and uh <laughs> it's um you know it, it's not the best overall free agent year uh you know for chicago to have that money which is typical chicago bears but uh you know so, so I, I think it's just one of those seasons where it's not good uh and i did uh, say jacob simon and i meant joshua simon i apologize vj for that um that's the deal there uh, you know, yeah, Joshua. Yeah, Eddie Simon. Lewis, not Eddie Griffith, too. That's. <laughs> I mean, I'm You're good. sorry because there's I'm a moron. Griffin too there. That's like it's like you, yeah, yeah. We put a couple of them together. It's it's hard to keep up with these portal guys and the guys that keep coming in and out. <laughs> yeah, because so. you may only read the name one time, JC, and the next thing you know, they're off to you know wherever Penn State, you know Colorado, like you said. So you'd like to have them, but yeah, yeah you got to competition uh... all the way around. Yeah, so that's it's a good deal, good deal there. So, um, Lewis, Eddie Lewis, like Millie Lewis. What? She's got, she's got Millie, Lewis. Millie Lewis. She's, she's got, got what it takes. What it takes. <laughs> All yeah, right, so that still was open good. Here <laughs> it is. Yes. Turning out those models, man. That's pretty mm -hmm. solid. Uh, so, uh, Nana Sports Chat Box, award winning Nana Sports Chat Box. VJ says, What's up, fellas? No work one day. Glad to be here live. Glad you're here, VJ. But mm -hmm. today, maybe we'll get on your uh, very, rather lengthy NIL, uh, I help consulting mailbag contribution because we haven't gotten I got to it, but it, up. it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. So, we're going to get to it today. Bruin Nation, Gamecock Barbecue has a little something to say. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, John says, happy Monday to the clown posse. Hope we get some good Jeff Coat news today. Yeah, I, I, it's just a matter of time with Jeff Coat. You know, you, 
there's paperwork and stuff that gets bogged down. It is South Carolina, and you know sometimes uh, it either goes lightning fast or it's it's, it's at a it's it's like the owl sheet off shat offense it goes slower than you know owl shat. Uh, Bruce said, "Wasn't sure if we have a show today." Yeah, uh, this is a holiday we decided to roll, and, and I, I would have not had it to be honest because I, I said when we started doing this thing, we'll take holidays off, right? Uh, just because. You know, Phil's got a family. I've got stuff to do. And we, and we don't want to, like, do a show on Thanksgiving. And then next Thanksgiving, we're like, well, whoop we want to stay consistent. But um, yeah. uh, I figured since I've been out and all, I, I need to, needed myself to kind of put in, you know, a full week and, and all that good stuff. I can't do it without Phil because Phil has all the gizmos. You know? <laughs> He's got the gizmos that make things good. Just be me talking into my phone or something. Ryan says, morning, Jits. Rob says, good morning to all. Great day to be a Gamecock. Uh, John says about my MLK, uh, agree 100% JK, uh, JC, JK. What the hell's wrong with me today? Uh, amazing <laughs> human being. BJ says MLK was a trailblazer. Uh, Ryan says, well, Jeff Goat, assuming he chooses Carolina, be able to get in for spring semester. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what they're working up against the clock for. I think you have until Tuesday to drop it in classes. So I think that um, – I think that'll that'll go, uh, and, and, I, and my understanding is maybe as soon as today, uh, it'll it'll be in there. So they're they're working; it'll happen. It's just I was told be patient. <laughs> so uh, there's the deal there. But just just what's the read on Simon wide receiver or tight end? I I think I, I think probably receiver, um, but a lot depends on kind of how they use the tight ends in this offense. Uh, and I hate to go down the road where oh he can play both and then. You know, he, he does a lot of good things with the ball in his hands, and then you're asking, we're asking, where is he? I don't think it's going to happen with Dowell Loggins, to be honest. Uh, where is he? Well, he's uh, you know, he's not blocking. Well, he, his blocking was good, you know. Um, yeah. But I think, yeah, he's what, 6'3", 218. That's light for a tight end. But he's got good ball skills. Uh, Chris Payne says he of Nana's porch fame. Good morning, clowns. I typed. It's so often it auto fills in. Good morning, clowns. Um, <laughs> Brian, morning, fellas. Have an extremely tough day mentally, but wanted to pop in and say, hey, I'll definitely catch the pod. Brian, you take care of yourself, man. You know, yeah, man. That, that's serious stuff. You just take care of yourself. Don't worry about listening live. Uh, and uh, relax. And, you know, I get it. I've had those days before, too. Yeah. Um, Chuck says, my dumbass signed in seven minutes late. Any news, good or bad? Uh, at the top, yeah, Jeff Coates probably a yes. Johnson's leaning toward no. Um, Eddie, what's his name? Phil Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> Eddie Lewis. Yeah. Uh, maybe a no if he goes to Colorado. McLean definitely. Uh, I would say a probable no going to Penn State. So probably not the best news you guys were looking for, but Jeff Coat uh, is probably going to be in. Drew says. Well, thanks for doing the show, Ian. I think it, I was thinking it'd be a quiet morning in my office. Yeah, and that's positive too, man, because that's cool. Because you sit there, and I, uh, most people are out, you know. Um, and uh, I, I'd probably, I'll probably tweet during the break that we, we do have a show today. For people to come join us. Um, yeah, and, and you know, you can just sit there and listen to the show live. You don't even have headphones mm-hmm. on. Most of you know, I, I've been in the office before on holidays by myself, so uh, thank thankfully I don't have to do that anymore. Um, yes. Craig says, morning, guys. Glad to all the Any news on the Mississippi State running back? Yeah, I, I, I'm leaning leaning towards a no on that. So we'll see. Uh, any word, win or if, we'll get Chris Payne. <laughs> That's a running <laughs> joke. Class of 07. And they tried to get in, tried to get in. Uh, Saunders says, Harbor got any visits lined up for this month? Not that I know of. Off the top of my head. And. Mm, Quantrell does bring up a very sad story. Um, Georgia. Yeah. Um, Just all. Croy. Yeah, the, the girl LaCroix down there. and uh, kind of She's kind of like the Jessica Jackson of Georgia, if you're looking for a comparison. And then, you know, with their offensive line, but tragically killed in a wreck, two other players hurt. Uh, you have mm-hmm. tragedy in Alabama, too. I don't know what the hell happened. But one of their basketball players was in a car, and they shot and killed a girl. Darius Miles, he's off the team and out of school, but uh, it's right there near Bryant Denny Stadium too. I'm like, what? 
what kind of craziness escalated to that point? I know. You know? Uh, they didn't even know each other. You know? I'm like, what? You got your whole life ahead of you. What are you doing? What are you even doing with a gun? How does beef get that out of control? You know? Uh, I don't understand it at all. But, yeah, prayers up to UGA. Prayers up to Bama. Uh, especially that girl's family and her friends. Uh, because... She didn't deserve it, so no. uh, that's that's bad. Zach says, less than ideal news on the Mississippi State running back. What do you think about the state of that position for next year, J.C.? I think, well, it, so so Dylan Johnson, if he rolls out to, to Seattle, and I'm not saying he will or not. I'm just saying that, you know, there's probably NIL money involved, right? <laughs> um, then I, it, it'd be a shame for that position because I think he and – uh, the kid uh, from Stratford, Mario Anderson Jr., I mm-hmm. guess. He would, I, I think they would battle it out. You know, then Juju McDowell is always going to have his role. Um, you know, if you look at it this way, you know, then the, what you're going to have to hope happens is Dontavious Braswell comes in and he's able to be, uh, give you depth um, and compete. Uh, and then Lavoisier Carroll's progression becomes that much more important next year unless they decide that the carry a joiners are running back <laughs> which if that happens i'll have to hand it to john whittle because john whittle called that when the carry on was like uh you know, early in his career <laughs> or i think it was when um it was before kevin harris sort of emerged but it, it was when uh marshawn had gotten hurt in the preseason in 2020 uh john brought that suggestion up i don't think it's a terrible suggestion but, yeah, so you're looking at Mario Anderson Jr., Lavoisier Carroll, um, Juju McDowell, and then Dontavious Braswell, and I think Dante Miller may have another year. Um, oh, but yeah, okay. I, I, that position, you know, it, it's – if I said it was chock, chock, full, chock full of uh, proven players, I'd be lying. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there that will be a question mark, but – you know, Carolina's got to block <laughs> and run the ball better overall. Uh, so that's the deal there. Uh, Crager says, hopefully Carroll gets his head in the game. I think he's very dynamic. Uh, VJ said, if I was Lavoisier and Carroll, I'd be going beast mode right now in the offseason program. He has a shot to make a major stride. Yeah, my understanding with him, too, is just knowing where to go and what to do. Now, look, there's a new offense. And the new offense, in theory, is supposed to be Simpler. much easier to learn. That's right. So, so perhaps <laughs> – uh, but, you know, and I, and I read that by a couple of sources of mine, and they were like, well, it's, it's a little more than just that. You know, it's just, you know, and, and he spent that year at, at corner at Georgia, you know, and he played for kind of a smaller school than he went to IMG or whatever. But, uh, you know, just – and look, very few running backs have to develop because uh, you either got it or you don't most of the time. It's a very – it's a position that requires a lot of natural ability. Um, but there are guys that some of the nuances of playing it at a higher level because they've never done anything like that before. It's just like, well, give him the ball. I guess like experience. Oh, shoot, just get the ball to Lavoisier. Let's go. <laughs> um, and so it becomes easy. Uh, but there are things like blocking assignments, running into the right hole, learning the plays, all that that have to take place. Um, and, and keep in mind, too, with Carroll, guys, uh, it, it, this gets lost on some people, myself included, because, you know, you, you hear that and you're like, oh, man, he's practiced all year and he doesn't have it. Well, keep in mind during the season, the scout team guys don't practice with the varsity, like, quote, unquote, unquote, the varsity. They're running the scout team during during the week. Now, during open weeks, they do have a chance to get out there and practice their younger players. They practice them on Sunday nights. But that's, that's like they're not getting four or five practices a weekend like they do in the preseason or in the spring. Uh, so there's been a limited time uh, for him to really get in and dig into it. And quite frankly, I think, you know, if, if you look at the depth chart, he probably, you, you're right uh, about that. VJ, he may see it. Man, man this is a big opportunity, right? Because uh, he is good enough. All right. First break is coming up right now. Uh, this is Inside the Gamecocks, the show. We'll be back after these messages. Golfers and wannabe golfers, former Gamecock golfer Meredith Taylor is now a full-time golf instructor in the Midlands of South Carolina. 
in-person golf lessons are held at the Country Club of Lexington. Half hour, hour, on course nine or 18 holes. And if you're outside of South Carolina, Meredith conducts virtual lessons. Just send in your golf swing for analysis. Gift cards are available for in-person one-hour lessons. Connect on Twitter at Mayor Taylor and find her online at McKellarEnterprises.org. Her email is on the website. Schedule your next lesson today with Meredith Taylor, former Gamecock golfer. Gamecock Nation, do you need a place to stay for the big game? Many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you support inside the Gamecocks, still earn your hotel loyalty points, and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel. Whether you are visiting Columbia to cheer on Carolina or hitting the road to follow the team, get in the stands with Fan Plans. Uh, this is Coach O. Now back to the show. Go Tigers. In the soul. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, everybody. We are presented by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Uh, give John Barber and his team a call to set up a new obligation consultation about a potential backyard retreat for your home. 864, scratch that. 803-446-4662. And of course, the first hour of the show is brought to you by Cindy Searfoss and the Coldwell Banker Kane Realty team here in the upstate. That's the 864-414-5271 to get in touch with Cindy about all of your upstate residential real estate needs. And JC yes. Quantrell in the award-winning Nano's Porch chat box has an interesting point. I kind of think spring practice, post spring practice, will be more fruitful for the Gamecocks in the portal. And he may be right because you get through those and then they start to solidify who's number one, number two. Somebody gets feelings hurt or looks like they're not going to have a lot of playing time. They jump in, especially in the skill positions. But yeah. what have you seen or feel in that? I don't know. I, I, I do think they there's a great chance they add some folks in the portal afterward. Um, just NIL money, man. It's just, uh, that's it changes I, everything. Well, <laughs> I am more, I am more positive and bullish on South Carolina, uh, being fine in that department than ever, but they're not just not quite there yet, you know, to, to, to match some of these deals. Of course, I think we're finding out Phil, some of these deals are promised, but not delivered. Yeah, there uh, seems to be some open-ended stuff going on, some you know, I, I, nefarious I of, things. <laughs> thank God, South Carolina doesn't have anybody. I think you got a lot of clowns out there yeah. running collectives, and they're basically fans. And you know, you think about the Florida situation, and you know, why would you ever agree to that dollar amount when, and then and then go find it and secure it later? I mean, that, that's that's bad. Why would you ever deal with an agent? I mean, look. I know you probably don't like Miami because you're old rivals, right? You didn't like the fact the kid went. But let's be realistic. How, how good is he really going to be? You know, uh, is he $13 million good? That's that's insane. You're out of your mind paying that. Yeah. Out of your mind. Uh, and, and I've heard things in other schools, too, with, with kids being promised money and then they don't get it. And then those kids have transferred and then, you know, I, I just think it's bad. Some of these people that, 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 and, and it's not just the collectives. I, I, th I think it's probably too, you know, the media. And um, as I've said many times, there, there's a guy at the athletic that thinks he knows the value of all these players <laughs> rated uh, based on their star rating. I'm like, bro, be careful with that, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you gotta be careful with that. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, if I were betting, on, on players turning out, I don't think I'd go right by the star ratings. And I've, I've lived in that world, and it's just so inexact, and you're dealing with different people's opinions, and, you know, you're splitting hairs a lot of the times with uh, this guy's just as good as this guy, but he's here. He, I mean, you know, it's not – I mean, it's, it's just not – I wouldn't bet on the NFL draft either, you know. Uh, I'll, I could probably place a bet on, like, who they'll pick because uh, you get these gut feelings, you know. Uh, and depending on the franchise, you can research kind of there, like the Bears. I would expect them to pick someone that's, that bust out in a couple of years. <laughs> so I'll, 
look at the list and go, who's most likely to bust? To have no long term success in the league. Yeah. I just I don't know. I don't know, man. You know, if I'm the Bears, I'm probably I'm probably if I'm not trading that pick, or if I could trade it down and still get this guy. Like like if I could trade with a swap of the Texans, get another couple of picks from them for Bryce Young, so they can take Bryce Young, and I can still take Jalen Carter, I probably would. Uh, I, I thought for a while Will Anderson would be the guy there. But uh, the more I think about Jalen Carter, the more I'm like, man, he's more rare. Uh, Anderson's a stud, don't get me wrong. And if the Bears could get both of them, that'd be awesome, but they're not. Um, but Jalen Carter, I mean, you just don't find guys like that. That big and quick twitch. And, and my, my goodness, he was just he was part of a rotation last year because Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt were the starting tackles. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Kevin Carter may have gotten hurt. I don't know, but he's really good. Um, Craig says, I saw a picture of all the DBs at one of the coaches' pools last summer, and Carroll looked better than all of them except running backs. Okay, mm-hmm. he meant. And Carroll looked better than all of them except Lloyd. He was shredded. He is. Uh, and keep in mind, he was a top 100 recruit as a high school running back. You know, I think Georgia moved him over there because they, they're always loaded at running back. Uh, and they were a little short on, on corners last season, believe it or not. <laughs> a little short. Georgia, a little short on corners. but uh, So that's why they did that. But I I think, um, I, you know, I, I think Lavoisier, if, if, if there's no Dylan Johnson, uh, I think it's Lavoisier's time to get, get moving and get on it, you know. Uh, and then Mario Anderson, Jr., who uh, I know he's from Newberry. It's probably not as exciting. As signing a guy that like was Mississippi State's leading rusher and all that because that guy's an SEC guy that's proven. But don't don't sleep on that guy. Don't sleep on that guy. Um, I am late stone. Is NIL the biggest hindrance for acquiring talent in the portal for Beamer and Company? Um, yes. Uh, unknown OC. Not a factor, man. Come on. Yeah. Unknown OC. Dowell Loggins is one of the better recruiters on the staff. Uh, got a text today from somebody. Loggins is a beast recruiter. Uh, Dowell Loggins has actually gotten guys since he's been here in a short amount of time at guys that don't even play his position. Dowell yeah. Loggins also helped get Spencer Rattler and Juice Wells back. Um, the only people that, that have this big issue with Dowell Loggins are Gamecock fans. I, you know, I get asked all the time. So somebody asked the other day, I guess Garrett Riley going to Clemson means the in-state offensive lineman for 2024 are headed there. No. Mm-hmm. Y'all are the only ones making this out to be, like, program-defining. Mm-hmm. I promise. Um, you know, and I know you probably hear it from your Clemson buddies, and they're mad because they lost. and They're, they're going to try to make you think that, well, they hired Garrett Riley now, so dominance is just right around the corner. Um, or the crazy narrative that we're hearing up here on the you know radio saying that, we wanted him and ultimately didn't get him because Clemson wanted him to. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now I'll start. Or maybe that was this. just, maybe I just uh, caught the headline on that because I, I, you know, I'll admit I um, wasn't going to listen to the link. <laughs> as, as I, I I'll, I'll say this about that. Number one, okay, it is plausible if, if, Beamer had gone after Riley with this big deal, right? And Carolina put all its eggs in that basket. Uh, and then if Clemson came along and offered him that he elected to go to Clemson over Carolina, um, because guys like Garrett Riley, they want to be head coaches soon, right? And uh, what's the what's the uh, more clear path coming, coming to South Carolina and facing it, teams like Georgia, you know, every year. And, uh, you know, you, you don't have a national championship pedigree and, and you don't, you know, uh, th- this is still a program very much in progress. Um, or do you take Clemson, which has been a national power now for, what, nine years, uh, eight years? Uh, even though they, they had a quote-unquote down year last year, still won the ACC. When the playoff expands, they they all have an even bigger shot at making it every single year. Uh, you're facing defenses for the most part that are similar to the ones you faced in the Big 12. 
meaning they're not very good. They're not the best, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, and, and it's Clemson. And, and so, yeah, I think it, it, it's a very plausible thing and believable thing if you knew somebody that told me that. But it's not true. <laughs> it, it's not true. And this guy, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's like the next chapter in a terrible novel like – like this guy, you know, if this guy were write an article, a novel about South Carolina, it's literally fantasy land. You know, I mean, this is the same guy that, that, that started talking about how the fans should revolt for forever to thee because the administration doesn't care about you and because they hired Shane Beamer. You know, keep in mind he's a Florida fan. Mm-hmm. And I know Florida beat the Gamecocks pretty good this year, but uh, – yeah, the school that changes coaches every three years. Uh, <laughs> the school whose players openly quit uh, during games. Uh, you know, and, and hopefully Billy Napier fixes that if, for, for the Gators. But, you know, I, I think there's just a lot of arrogance uh, coming uh, from that end. Uh, and also, on top of that, it's okay to be arrogant. And look, man. You want to sit on the radio and take shots at Clemson or Carolina or Florida or whoever the hell you want to? That's fine with me, but don't make stuff up. Right. I mean that that's like that's like being a. Uh, it's worse than a message board troll. That that's worse than someone. Uh, you know, and there is a Clemson Twitter account out there that lives on our message board. Apparently, has a spreadsheet. Yes. <laughs> a spreadsheet. Uh, and call call me what? What do you call me? Uh, Neck, hot mess, neck, beard, tough guy. That's a lot of things to unpack. Um, <laughs> I've insulted people by calling them neck beards before. I have a beard because I really don't like to shave because my face is fat. But I, I'm not like a neck beard, tough guy, right? Uh, and uh, that's number one. And then number two, hot mess, I, I'll admit it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, that's Wear a very that, fit. Yeah. That's a very feminine term, though, and it's a lot like calling a grown man a silly goose if you call another grown man a hot mess. So I don't know if I'd be spreading that around there at the uh, at the Walgreens where you work second shift uh, when you get out of your mom's basement and uh, stop tweeting at Gamecock Media outlets. What a pathetic loser. I mean, you know, some of these guys, I'm like, it is fine, man. I mean, look, I, I, don't, I don't let that guy tick me off. Um, and there's a line you can cross, and, and, and he would be the type that could cross it because uh, I think he's psychotic and, and sick in the head, to be honest with you. Uh, but as long as as long as he doesn't get sick in the head on me, you know, I'll leave him alone. I have him blocked, but it's just kind of funny, the obsession. Uh, but back back to the, uh, the the shock jock there in the upstate, um, I, I don't have a problem with, with, with going off on Carolina or needling the fan base or being a potster. Just don't lie. Don't make stuff up. Don't make stuff up at all. Um, and, uh, you know, Beamer lashed out about it because it's not true. Now, look, everybody, oh, yeah, well, whatever. Beamer didn't want Garrett Riley. I didn't say he didn't want him. I'm saying that the, the more I learn about this whole thing, the more I've, I've determined that, and people will back this up, he really kind of only went after one guy, and that was Double Lock. Now, is that right, wrong, indifferent, a mistake? That's all to be determined, okay? I think it's okay to be like, wow, you know, why did he do this? Um, he thought outside, kind of had his guy and got him, you know? <laughs> Ray Tanner certainly didn't have anything to do with it. Saw somebody blame Ray, <laughs> as usual. Oh, yeah. Um, he didn't have anything to do with it. This was Shane Beamer's decision. And right, wrong, or indifferent. And I'm not sitting here telling you Clemson did not make a fantastic hire. I'm not sitting here telling you Garrett Riley's not that good. I'm not sitting here telling you any of that. I'm saying that it's a wonderful hire by them, uh, but it wasn't South Carolina versus Clemson, and then he picked Clemson. Although, if that were the case and he did pick Clemson, I'll give him – I'll say most coaches would tell you they'd probably go with Clemson. But there was no big push for Garrett Riley. I can assure you that right now on South Carolina's end. Uh, he, uh, you know – he, I think he, I think there was probably more discussion with Garrett when Beamer first got here 
than there was this past time. Um, and so the, that's what gets me. And it's constant. It's a constant like, ooh, look at this. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at this. Uh, and then he goes on and on about his awards. And, and, and I well, that's the only defense con. ever. That, that, like, you know, anytime he gets confronted with anything, like, we're number one. We're number one. We're number Those one. Those awards well, are know. garbage, man. Those awards I mean, are yeah. like, you're, you're, you vote on, your peers vote on them. And most of the radio stations around the state don't even submit. And the, and the guy in charge there is like really big on that because he can sit there and, and brag on his uh, talent, uh, which he doesn't, you know, most general managers in radio these days don't respect their talent. They're just basically money grabbing salespeople, which is why I'm glad we're independent because we don't, we don't do that, but uh, we take care of our talent here. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so he loves that. So he, he mandates it across the board. We got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. That's well and good. I could care less. <laughs> I, hey, look, hey, I won that award. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I won that. We won that award when I, when I was on that station. Yep. You Greg were McKinney, on that show. Remember? Won that. Yep. You won that best award. Sports, the same award. Uh, mm -hmm. Best sports talk show, you know. So, so I could care. I could give a flip. I could give a flip if he's a studio host for the NFL. And I'll say this he's got a lot of friends in the radio business. Fine. That's the radio business. Quit lying about the University of South Carolina. And then this industry sources thing is a joke. Like, as he said, my, every industry source I've talked to, industry source, well, that usually means like agents and other coaches. Uh, outside of, oh, I don't know, South Carolina's arch rival, um, you know, people that are kind of involved in college football. There's not a single person that said that. Do you not think if industry sources were telling you it's going to be Garrett Riley or the Beamer's going hard after Garrett Riley, do you not think that would have leaked? Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> uh, the people like that run football scoop and uh, football rumor mill and all that, I, I know all those people. There's not a damn industry source that said, believe me, I was chasing it. You know, so, so whose industry sources are better? Are you gonna are you gonna believe the guy that lies constantly about South Carolina and doesn't really understand the program and spits all over you guys every chance he gets? Or you can believe the guy that uh, told you much to my chagrin uh, and caused a meltdown on Wednesday before the Tuesday that Loggins was official that it was yeah. Dowell Loggins. So who's got the better industry sources? All right, and there's not a one of them that said anything about Garrett Riley. Uh, and I'm not saying, look, my sources are better than yours, blah, 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 blah. I'm just saying, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying industry. An industry source could be anything. That's why I, I rarely use that term. I'll say a non-South Carolina source uh, if I if I do that. So uh, that's about all I want to say about that guy. Uh, I don't agree with the people that are, like, telling Beamer, like, oh, that's just not, he, he, he shouldn't have done that. I think he should. I think it's refreshing that you have a guy on social media that will defend your program. And look, Steve Spurrier did the same thing. He just wasn't on Twitter. <laughs> right? He would have saved uh, it for the press conference. Yeah, he right. saved same it for thing. the press mm -hmm. conference. He kicked Ron Morris out of a press conference one day. Say, I'm just going to go back here and do a bunch of exclusives, and I don't have to talk while this guy's in here. You know? Which, you know, hey, what did Ron do? Why did he piss Spurrier off? He lied. He had falsehoods. False information. Nobody's mad about criticism. Nobody. I mean, criticism's fine. Nobody's mad about. I wouldn't care if they joked at Carolina's expense, right? <laughs> you know, there's some material there, right? But um, this this making things up and pretending like, or or, or, or just, I don't know. I, I would imagine if you trace that quote unquote industry source, it probably leads down, you know, one twenty three. Or 150, 153 to 123 and, and straight into Pickens County. I bet that's where the industry source is. Or, or other radio other radio guys, which rarely have scoop. I mean, Ray, Phil Kornblut's like different than, than most radio guys. He's actually got news. Uh, you know, Gunner and I. So, you know, there's some of us that have news, right? Some connections. But most are just like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> you know, let, let's, let's, you know. Uh, let's give our opinions loudly today and then, you know, go get a beer. Um, so, so what other radio sources? I mean, I, I don't know who you've got, but um, I just, uh, just knowing it, you know, just pay, trying to paint that picture is unfortunate, I, I think, because it, it makes it appear uh, like it's something it's not. And, and as I said, and I'll close with this, uh, if that was the case, uh, I'm, I'm telling you right now, 
he didn't. I wouldn't be. I, I would have been surprised had he come to South Carolina over Clemson. Um, most coaches look at the Clemson job a lot, even even before their success, a lot differently, because coaches love the path of least resistance. And you've got a big SEC style program with a with a gigantic. Uh, I don't say they have a gigantic fan base, but eighty thousand in the stands. Uh, they recruit like an SEC program. They got facilities like an SEC program, but they don't have to play an SEC schedule. So when you look at it, you're like, yeah, Clemson job's fantastic, and it's always been that way since before Carolina got in the SEC. You know, it, it's always been that way. Tommy Bowden, Mike McGee talked to Tommy Bowden when when he ended up hiring Lou Holtz, and you know the word was, you know, South Carolina's really interested in Tommy Bowden, and so was Clemson. And it was a no-brainer layup. He was going to Clemson, not to mention they had just – Carolina just fired his buddy. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to say, you know, it's a, that's a different story because people are like, well, you're saying – but I, I'm saying this thing uh, is a lie. It's not true. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lie at worst and a rumor at best. And if you put out lies and rumors, you should be expected to get called out about it. And then you don't need to whine and be like, well, Beamer knows how to get in touch with me if he wants. No, Beamer shouldn't waste his time on you. Yeah, right. He said yeah, that's piece. not going to happen. Lie. <laughs> stop, fuck, stop lying, right? Stop lying. Uh, that's the easiest way to get around it. Stop making things up about Carolina and their fan base. Stop pulling stuff out of thin air like this, the alma mater lyrics uh, because you don't think they should have hired Shane Beamer. <laughs> you know, uh, stop, stop making things up. You know, I literally think some of the narrative about Carolina that comes out from up there comes straight off the most the, the message boards and some of the most disgruntled, ignorant people on the planet. Like, like literally his narratives about Carolina are like some of these posters that have just made stuff up because they're mad at the administration, they're mad at Ray. Maybe he's trying to appeal to that point oh oh five percent of these fans uh, and get his cut or whatever. But it's a shame because that station used to be – Sort of down the middle, you know. Greg McKinney and I talked about the game guys just as much as Clemson. Everybody, we talked about Furman. Um, you know, I, 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 there's a lot of people in that building I have a lot of respect for, or I guess, I guess in the building, or they're working remotely or whatever. But um, you know, it, it's just one of those things. So anyway, uh, mm-hmm. time for another break, and uh, then we'll be back after these messages on the show. Hey man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues, and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. You know what, Phil? Let's ask Stone Blanton. Hey, JC and Phil. If you want a solution to your IT problems, give Heritage Digital a call. Our boy Matt Odom has a low-cost, one-price solution that will get you running right. Call 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com and ask for Matt. He will hook you up today and tell them Stone City. If you're looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of Remax at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at remax.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at remax.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Game Cox. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. I Help Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and I Help Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it, let them find it. These folks are incredible. iHelpConsulting.com. How can I help you? This is Fresh and All-American, Nicky Memorial of the Carolina Gamecocks, and you are listening to the show with JC and Phil. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, everybody. The show is presented to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Uh, give them a call. Talk about potential outdoor retreat for your backyard. Maybe a sunroom addition. 803-446-4662. 
And the first hour of the show is brought to you by Cindy Searfoss and the Coldwell Banker Kane Realty Team here in the upstate. Give Cindy a call, 864-414-5271 to talk about any and all of your upstate residential real estate needs. And let's see. A couple things. Yeah, I did answer your question there, JC. So I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll uh, see. Contrast is I blame the NCAA for all this NIL nonsense. They had a chance to slow play change with paying players. But instead, they want to suspend guys like A.J. Green and Johnny Manziel for signing stuff. Yeah, and I've told the story many times. A dude had a cooking channel on YouTube. He's making pennies per minute, and they, they shut him down. Uh, they wouldn't let players get paid for camps. Uh, it's, a, they, they, it's their fault. Yeah, I mean, you know, people want to know – you know, what's happened and, and why is all this happening is the NCAA because, because when it got to, they should have known better when it got to court and they're like arguing about, Oh, well, we don't want these corp. We, we, they made anyway, speaking of lying and making something up, mm. uh, it's intellectually dishonest. This is what I, I'll, I'll say about it. You know, they sat there and went, Oh, okay. Well, we're worried these corporations will corrupt our amateur athletes. And so then the other lawyer just pulled up a picture of uh, somebody celebrating the national championship or whatever in front of a big banner that said Nissan. Yeah. What about uh, that corporate? You mean like Nissan? You mean, yeah, right. <laughs> like, like, like uh, so who gets paid for this? Oh, well, we do with our corporate sponsors. <laughs> I know. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, and, and look, I, and, and if they, and if they if they just said, all right, we'll do this. If they said, all right, well, here's what we're going to do uh, with this nil thing, you know, with, with the video game and all that, we're going to pay you guys a little bit out, and you know, we're gonna we're we're gonna let you do it, but it has to be fair market value, and we're going to regulate it. Uh, I, I think we'd be fine, you know. I, I think it, it would it would create sort of a competitive imbalance with. You know, certain as as we thought at the beginning with certain schools and bigger media markets, um, like everybody was like, "Well, gosh, Northwestern and UCLA and Boston College are going to have a because they're in big media markets." They're not even I mean, UCLA does a little bit. <laughs> Northwestern and Boston College, nothing. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, know, what about know, yeah, Northwestern? <laughs> you got you got way more funds in College Station in Bryan, Texas than than you do in uh, in New York City for college and I L. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, they had a chance to make it legit. And, and, and really, really, they could have just limited it to, like, you know, all right, you, you want to go sell your own T-shirts online? Great. Do it. Entrepreneurship. Hey, that's what it's like. You know, uh, and I, I think colleges in general these days discourage entrepreneurship for whatever reason. And <laughs> I, I have my theories on that, but I'll keep them to myself. Um, and, you know, it, it, it you could have really not only diffused it before it got to this, but you could have you could have really done something that was pretty awesome for athletes, right? Besides, we only go, not all of us go pro in sports, you know, um, because because you give them sort of some real world experience. I mean, a lot, a lot of kids get out of college have no idea what what's going on. Uh, my feeling is college these days, college kids these days, they like go and quit jobs because their feelings are hurt. My fiance works with a guy. He came in, slept on his desk. Uh, <laughs> keep in mind, she's a, she's a, she's a, she works for Blue Cross. She's an insurance underwriter. This dude, they called him the Napster because he took a nap every day. The Napster. And then, um, you know, <laughs> nice guy, all that. But, you know, in underwriting, what happens is they send the, you know, the policy. You have to crunch all these numbers. It blows my mind. I mean, I don't have the type of brain to do it. But, uh so Napster kept his head down on the desk and was doing mediocre work. And he goes in for his evaluation after six weeks, six weeks. Like, yeah, you know, uh, we noticed you've, uh, you've been sleeping a little bit at work. He's like, yeah, you know, I just go out sometimes. And, and you know, I, sometimes I don't even sleep before I come back in. Well, that's great to admit. Uh, and then they're like, well, you know, we're, we're going to keep you on board here. I think he's making what like forty one a year. That's a pretty good, decent salary straight out of high college or whatever. Uh, he's like, well, no, no, no. He's like, I really need sixty thousand, uh, and I, I need I need a raise uh, before you know I can continue. 
Like, well, there's the door. Uh, turning yeah, security right, yeah. for it. You know, I mean, it was, it, it, they, they weren't even going to fire the guy. And, and he asked for a 50% raise after sleeping on his desk for a week. Uh, and I hear stories like that all the time. Those of you with kids that age or those of you who are that age that aren't that way, I'm sure there are many of you. Thank you, because you make me feel better about the future of our country and our world. <laughs> um but you're right, Quantrell. You're right. I mean, all they had to do was cut the players some slack. I mean, yeah. all they had to do. There's no reason why you should not be able to. And what they were worried about was, well, you'll have an autograph signing and a booster will come in there with a million dollars. And you can sign everything. Here, sign my, sign my wife's fake boobs like like in that movie. Uh, is it The Toy? With Jackie Gleason, where he had <laughs> yes. his name was U.S. U.S. <laughs> yeah, he decided, I'll just give me a sign. Of, you know, uh, were they worried about that? Probably, but hey, guess what's happening now? <laughs> 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 you got a guy making a hundred thousand dollars to send a tweet, and it's perfectly legal because all all of these are governed by state law, and the, and the states actually, you know. To a certain extent, the states were like, well, we can help regulate this and make it make sense and all that. The state laws were not wide open. Well, then everybody got like a year into it and like other states didn't even have laws. And so it reverts to the federal statute, which says you can make as much money as you want anytime you want, just pay taxes. And so these state laws they had, which were in good faith to kind of govern it, they were like in South Carolina, they suspended it. Oh, no, nope, never mind. We're not, there's, there is no state law. <laughs> And, and, every, and four or five other states were like, shoot, if Texas is going to do this, we're just going to, you know, there is no state law. And so that got them there, too. Uh, Ryan says, where do things stand on Park Avenue ESM? Any more updates on that? Last I heard, they were kind of working through it because, man, it's complicated because there's got to be like a separation agreement. and uh, Then they have to reestablish. But um, I'm hopeful that, that they get back up and running. But I, I just don't know. I would, I felt better about them getting back up and running and, and all that like a few weeks ago, but I, uh, I don't know. I think I think it's going to be up to the collectives to make things happen for the foreseeable future. So go join Carolina Rise. <laughs> Many of you have. Um, Chuck says that guy's a jack. All right, there we go. Walgreens second shift. I meant third, like the dude that goes in after hours and mops. I don't know if there's a third shift at Walgreens. It's a third shift. Some of them are 24 hours, though. Some are 24 hours, though. Happy, happy, happy. said, I heard Dabo really wanted Dowell Loggins, but couldn't get him. Yeah, let's put that out there. That. Let's uh, let's just yeah, fight was, fire with fire. Yeah, that's Dabo right. Dabo Sweeney yeah. tried to hire Dowell Loggins. Um, <laughs> uh, VJ, our, Jerry says, we all saw what Riley's offense did against Georgia. Yeah. That was not pretty. <laughs> No, and not exclusive to Garrett Riley, obviously. I didn't, yeah, and I didn't. I, I, I thought, you know, so they went and beat Michigan, and I, I thought, you know, like I said, TCU speed wise could match up with Michigan pretty well, and actually, were probably the faster team. Like you noticed, their defense was swarming and all that. Yeah, they look um, great. Mm-hmm. I, I think the difference between Georgia and Michigan is, is Georgia's just as big as Michigan. They're a whole lot faster, aren't they? <laughs> and the speed just caught up. They were just completely overwhelmed. And then, you know, as Ben Briner calls it, the death machine offense. I mean, that offense, you just, you know, if, you, if you're not good at, like, like Missouri had a good game plan against them. I think Kentucky had a good game plan against them. If you don't have a good plan and you're getting out of position and you're getting drug and you can't move the ball, you have no chance. Because it's not it, it's a it's a pro style system, but and, and they do still have power runs. But then you're literally having to defend fifty three and a half yards horizontally every single play, and then don't get me started on Brock Powers. Yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> and then you've got complete that, you know. freak. Yeah, I, 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 we've all seen a lot of good tight ends over the years. I, I've never seen a freak like that. A tight end that's a, you know, and, he, and he's not your like six seven guy. I mean, he but this guy's just a ball player. He runs like a scalded dog. I mean, I mean seriously. Just like, I mean, like you talk yards after contact. How about yards with people hanging off your back? <laughs> Is yeah. that a stat? Because Brock would Unreal. lead that, I'm sure. Yeah. Unreal. <laughs> um, VJ says, every time I hear you guys talk about media trolls, I hear that quote in my head from Dub and Dubber. You are one pathetic loser. 
I think of the school of rock quote. It's like, you're a fat loser and you have body odor. I lose a body odor. You're a fat loser and you have body odor. Uh, Lance says, what up, killers? How we doing today? Oh, going on the day off. So chilling to the, oh, how we doing? Go the day off. So chilling to the max. It's good I bet it's today. got the day off. <laughs> it's probably got the day off. Got the day off. Well, that's. So I will right. forgive you for that tea. Let's chill. You're missing a tea, sir. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I, I knew Lance Player. I actually thought about Lance this morning because I, I, I'd go to the post office for Carolina Rise, right? Because we got a bunch of stuff to mail out. I actually sold a bunch of Carolina Rise gear. That beanie <laughs> I had on the other day, probably sold seven of those on Friday. How about nice. that? Nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, gear, gear sales are like not what we count on to raise money. They're kind of supplemental and they do help promote it and all that. But man, oh man, those beanies were popular. <laughs> uh, that and the black patch trucker hats, which I got to figure out a way to get those to me before four weeks uh, from here on. Cause they're selling too. I think, I think by the time my next order comes in, I only have like one left. And so I'm, I'm going to take it down to uh, this Yugoslavian lady that, that runs the uh, embroidery and screen printing a- apparatus near us. Uh, she helped us out with some T-shirts and some truck hats and stuff like that. So I'm going to take her that black patch hat and go, can you make this for me, Lena? She's like, I can make it for you right now. <laughs> All right. But uh, speaking of Martina Navratilova, um, <laughs> heck, of a, uh, heck of a comeback by the Jaguars Saturday night. I mean, just, you want it, yeah. Just, just wanted to say that. I mean, I, and look, I, I'm, I'm going to give this credit. All, all you Clemson people that troll in and listen. Mm-hmm. People were making fun of Trevor first quarter. And, and I looked at my fiance. I was like, it's too soon. I was like, this is kind of unprecedented. And he doesn't normally do this. Uh, this is like different. Uh, and, I, and, and, and I went to my whole thing like, well, it's not how you, it's not as you face adversity. It's how you respond to it. Um, this game, and I'll just say, I'll, this game any, anybody that's so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 this game, this game is not over. Uh, and uh, I'll say this: anybody that's a Carolina fan or anybody on Clemson's schedule, just be glad he's gone. Yeah, because the only game they fell behind and ended up, and even in that game they fell behind and ended up losing. But they came back, cut it twenty-eight twenty-five. LSU game in the title game. That's the only game I can remember that happened. And then they got they got cut by uh, Ohio State. Uh, in the in the Sugar Bowl during the pandemic year, but he wasn't completely healthy that year. Uh, but that kid responds to adversity. <laughs> uh, he never gave up. He, you know, you never saw him on the sidelines throwing his helmet or cuss. He's like, "Come on, guys, let's go." Uh, kind of I can fix it. <laughs> uh, I can fix Spicoli. it. I can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Spicoli, but no. Uh, Heck of a win, um, and and, uh, I, and you know I I hope that Trevor uh, looks at that final score of that game thirty one thirty and gets a T shirt made that says thirty one thirty on it, and they will all laugh. <laughs> That's a heck of a reverse final troll, score, right? Yeah, hey. yeah thirty one thirty. There we go. Uh, Seventy six is always want to take a nap as soon as I get out of bed. <laughs> Uh, Kazal was an OG. Saunders says, great Sunday is when you take a few naps and then go to bed. Yeah. Sounds That's kind like of my Sunday, Sunday yesterday. I had a nice yeah. nap. I was tired yesterday. James said, I saw UGA in South Carolina and then went to the big house for Maryland, Michigan the next week. There is an ocean of talent difference between Michigan and Georgia. There is, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I, now, Ohio State, I think, is a different animal. I think Ohio State just <coughs> – Excuse me. <clears throat> Swallow the wrong way there. No. Ohio State literally, like, did not play up its, to its potential until they played Georgia this year. I mean, I watched a lot of their games because they're usually on early, you know, the Big mm-hmm. Ten, which will go away soon, which sucks because that means more SEC and ACC at noon. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'd watch a lot of their games, you know, like Iowa. They played Iowa. And they just kind of screw around, screw around, screw around. And all of a sudden they got 50 on the board. Um, <laughs> and then Michigan beat them in the jaw. And then they came back, and I think you saw how talented they were against Georgia. Ohio State and Georgia were probably the two best teams in the country. And I'll tell you who the third best team in the country was is Alabama. 
I don't care what anybody says. I, I think Alabama was the number, the third best team in the country. Now, it's not always the four best; it's the four most deserving. So, and they were not as deserving, I think, as Ohio, as TCU or Ohio State, because they lost two games. But anyway, seventy six is love having Monday off to enjoy the show and all here without having to work. Or, or other junk chopping at the bit for my time and attention. That's right. Uh, yeah. It's a shame Bowers had to come back. Yeah, <laughs> Bowers is uh, coming back for a third year. It's funny championships his first two years, but needs another year. He has the rules. He's, a, he's only a third card. He's like, uh, Lance has got to get me that hat. Can't wait to order. The black patch one, go ahead and order it, dude, because they're running out. Oh, I mean, that's because yeah, the there's only one left. In. Yeah. Yeah, it'll only be like one or two left. Um, 76 is, I want to say, having the Paramount Plus through TBS subscription, best deal ever in the history of man. Wish the Showtime was available, though. It's locked. Haha, <laughs> call me selfish. Yeah, the add-on or whatever. Yeah, it's a Paramount Plus. A lot of people like it, so it's good. <coughs> that guy couldn't motivate me to eat a sandwich. <laughs> you two are some movie nerds. Um, you know, Quantrell... We'll end it with his from the Nana Sports chat box. Uh, I wonder with Beamer responding to the criticism is because how the program is viewed naturally and stepping on false narratives about the program. I do hope he gets to a point where he ignores it. Yeah, I think any time you're building and you're you're fighting the good fight, you know, you should probably brush back at something like that because here's what happens. Uh, it, in the media these days, there's like things like the Spun and uh, whatever Sports Illustrated's name is on now, <laughs> and uh, blogs and stuff, and they'll just pick it up. Go, oh, it's a radio station; they should be somewhat reputable, and then they'll then there'll be ten headlines. You know, yeah. Beamer lost the battle for Clemson per reports to Riley, and it, it, it's not their fault. They're what they're, they're what's called aggregators and. At 24-7, we do a lot of aggregating, too. It's good content. You want people looking at your stuff, that kind of thing. But so, so these days, it's way more important to step on those false narratives right away. In the venue, they're being propagated, like Twitter, unfortunately, uh, before they're gotten. And if you notice, our podcast, our show here, we were the first ones to call it out. <laughs> uh, and then Beamer came in. I'm pretty sure Beamer follows all of us. I'm pretty sure he saw us retweet it because he had never heard of it before. Got it there. Um, all right. Uh, more Nana Sports chat box. John, uh, to answer your question about Oscar Delp, he says, will Delp hit the portal? Well, he's probably going to start after next year. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I know everybody would love to see that happen. Um, Lance says, any news on the portal targets? Yeah, the, the, the kid from Memphis looks like a, a maybe. Dylan Johnson's leaning towards no. McLean's leaning towards Penn State. Jeff Coates almost – it's it's done, but it's not. You know, it's just paperwork hmm. um, and all that. Uh, and Jason says, as a grad of USC, sometimes I'm embarrassed by Beamer's reaction. Ignore them and strive on. Yeah, I just don't think you can ignore that for the reasons I stated. Uh, you, you don't want something that's, that's that inaccurate that, that kind of makes you look bad uh, to stay out there. Because, uh, like I said, it's not just their 8,000 followers that get it. You know, some of these other folks that aggregate, they'll pull it. Oh, that's interesting. And, you know, stir the pot and, you know, go click clickbait, I guess. We live in a clickbait media society. Yeah. And they are a CBS so they affiliate. So, I mean, they would have a platform. Yeah. They are. They are. And that's why I was very measured with some of the things I said. Because <laughs> CBS <laughs> is the parent of 24 7 as well. Uh, anyway, got to hit a break. We're back after these messages on the show. Just as your State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home, auto, life, or small business insurance with Tony Pope State Farm Insurance today. And guess what you'll get? That's right, even more good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, Tony Pope State Farm is your go-to agent anywhere in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try combining your home, life, auto, and or small business insurance today. 
Tony Pope State Farm has been in business for more than 30 years and can handle anything you need in the tri-state area. Once again, Tony Pope State Farm will help you mix and match perfectly. Call 843-851-2222 or visit TonyPope.com today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That was easy. He's got a tiger by the tail, he has. He better hang on to. People have spoken. Nana's Porch was voted the third best food truck or trailer by the Charlotte newspaper Public Poll. Also, their pimento cheese mm, took third in a contest exclusively for products made in the state of North Carolina. I will let Noah Hall tell you about the rest. Nana's Porch, Southern Cuisine with an Uptown Twist. If you're in the upstate of South Carolina and are in need of residential real estate services, Cindy Bass, Sear Foss of Caldwell Banker Kane is for you. Ask her about the village at Creekside, all of her listings in my hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina, right there on Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a lifelong Gamecock fan. And many of our listeners have already bought homes from her and been 100% satisfied with the detail and care she uses. Cindy Searfoss, 864-414-5271, Caldwell Banker Kane in the upstate for your real estate needs. This is Braylon Wimmer, South Carolina Gamecock Baseball, and you are listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. Go Cox! Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show brought to you by Express Zone Rooms in Columbia. Give John Barber and his team a call, 803-446-4662, to discuss a potential patio enclosure or even a porch. Uh, just kind of spruce up your house and get ready for the summer sun. Give them a holler. And we are joined now on the McKellar Enterprises guest line by none other than Keith Alsa of the Locked on the Gamecocks podcast. Uh, got our schedules back to normal here, Keith. Everybody feeling well? Hope you've been well. Had a happy new year. Merry Christmas and all that. Happy new year, JC and Phil. This is the uh, first new time year. we've been on in 2023. So happy That's new right. year. Happy new year. Uh, well, we'll get right to it. want to get your take on, um, I guess, the news of, of Wells and Rattler coming back. Uh, how does that... Uh, you know, I guess we've asked everybody so far, how, how's that kind of, how does that skew your expectations positively or negatively for next year? Well, I mean, JC, there's no doubt it's a huge boost for the program to get Rattler back for a second year. I don't really think any of us thought Spencer Rattler would stay two years unless year one went really wrong. And up until the Tennessee game, it was not going according to what he, you know, probably thought it would be, nor Shane Beamer, nor anybody else. I think the only people that were happy the way Spencer Rattler was playing up until the Tennessee game were all the people that, you know, were heaping criticism on him. And they were just saying, hey, you just proved us right. You're not that good. Well, I mean, he was beaten out by the Heisman Trophy winner from this year and next year's presumptive number one pick in the National Football League draft. I mean, I think the more you see on Caleb Williams and what he does, Spencer Rattler's really good. It's no knock on him that he got passed up for Caleb Williams, who, you know, if he doesn't pull his hamstring in the first quarter, As much as I was pulling against them, I think Southern Cal would have definitely been in the college football playoff. He just was not the same uh, after he pulled the hamstring because he couldn't run. And, man, that guy is big. He's got a great arm, and he's extremely mobile. I mean, he's probably what Bryce Young would be if Bryce Young was 6'3". I mean, Bryce Young's probably 5'11 and a half in socks. So, I mean, I think it's big. I think to me, up until this point, and I quantify by saying up until this point, I really don't think South Carolina has done what they should have done in surrounding Spencer Rattler and Juice Wells. I mean, obviously, 
it would have been better for all parties involved if the decision could have been made during the college football playoff semifinals instead of the college football playoff championship game. That would have given South Carolina more time to pursue targets in the transfer portal. South Carolina, I mean, I thought I heard you say right before the break, Dylan Johnson looks like a no. If that's the case, that would be extremely disappointing. Uh, Malik McLean, I mean, Penn State got Dante Cephas, who was a guy everybody wanted out of the portal. They fired their wide receivers coach. They've, they've gotten other guys out of the portal, and it still looks like Malik McLean is going there. And so, you know, as well as Xavier Leggett played in the bowl game, I just don't think you can feel comfortable with him being your number two at wide receiver Obviously, there's a long time until August, uh, but we're just going to have to see what South Carolina can do in the transfer portal. I like the freshman wide receivers, but none of them are going to be in in spring to learn the offense. And we'll just have to see how fast they can coach them up and get them ready to go in September. Yeah, and not getting Dylan Thompson or Dylan Johnson, if that happens, that, that would have been big because that gives you a guy that's not only a, a, an SEC starter at running back, he's really good at catching passes out of the backfield, but my understanding is it's an NIL deal and the uh, purple people eaters in Seattle have a little bit more sweeter deal on the table. So, Well, I mean, that's just another – Point of contention with me is why does Washington and Nebraska, who's basically on the western frontier of the Big Ten and many other programs that are not Ohio State or Georgia or Alabama or Oklahoma or Texas, why are they in better position and better positioned to get quality guys out of the transfer portal at the skill positions than South Carolina? That just should not be the case. It, it, it should not have been until December for Ray Tanner to finally figure out, oh, well, I think we need, you know, the collectives. And – JC, I know you're busting your rear end, and I, I commend you, and I, I plug Carolina Rise every chance I get on the podcast, but it's just not enough, and not yet anyway. And I just think there's a lack of forward thinking from the top down at South Carolina, and unfortunately – when you're having to spend a lot of your money just to retain your own players who you have to re-recruit every year, and even then you don't get them right, like, let's face it, Jordan Burks was well compensated, okay, by everybody before he signed his national letter of intent. And for him to lead to go across the country for one year I think it's just another bad decision because, yeah, what do you get on the front end? You get more money. But are you going to want to live in Oregon? I mean, we know his mom is extremely close to her family. What's going to happen if Jordan Birch, God forbid, has an injury or God forbid doesn't become a great NFL player and comes back home and needs a job? South Carolina people are not taking care of him. I mean, that was a that was not a 10 or 20 or 30 year decision. That was a nine month decision. And you know, I just think the the portal has taken more than it's given outside the tight end position for South Carolina this year because teams have raided the roster with NIL money, or at least promises of NIL money. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and I agree with your, you know, I wouldn't call it criticism, but it's just a fact that uh, at South Carolina, they, I, I think they went down one path 
that was never going to solve it, but that was really the focus uh, with uh, the Park Avenue thing, which is great. But that was really more of a a set piece than the, than the than the whole uh, stage. <laughs> uh, and uh, they finally got behind it and all that good stuff. And um, and they're going to continue to, and, and that's good. The bad is, is, is like, look, when you when you have to kind of start to, you have to start taking care of your players, the ones that are here first and foremost, uh, because they are going to leave. And then second, uh, when it comes to uh, portal guys, uh, it, you know, and in football last year, it wasn't quite that way. Uh, basketball definitely was, but but this year I've seen it. It's been a whole lot worse. Like as far, not gonna say worse, but a whole lot more uh, money driven. Um, at the same time, you know, uh, that's what I heard about Dylan Johnson today. And, uh, and I heard that about some other guys that are at South Carolina right now. So sometimes things have a way of working out. Uh, w- the, the number I was given, I'm not going to repeat it, but the number I was given on Dylan Johnson is not ridiculously sick money. It wasn't. It was, it was, it was I think, honest to God, pretty fair for a player of his – accomplishments and ability uh, and, and the experience he has uh, in in the SEC. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with all that. But, I, t- Keith, I agree with you. They did get behind a little bit. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes from here. I think now if you don't get Dylan Johnson, I'll see what you think out of this. I think Lavoisier Carroll becomes a pretty important player uh, heading into next year. I mean, he really does. He really, really does. Um, look, I'm, I think JC, you know, from what you've been told and, and relayed to me about Mario Anderson, the staff is extremely high on him, but man, he's going to be in a completely different galaxy. Okay. I mean, division two is like earth 19 compared to earth one in the Southeastern conference. And Lavoisier Carroll's a guy that has gained some weight. Christian Bill Smith, you know, had good things to say about him uh, of, of the young guys up until he was injured in bowl prep. But this is really a critical offseason for him. And, you know, I was thinking outside the box and thought if South Carolina could hit on Eddie Lewis and Malik McLean or maybe – you know, Tulu, uh, the little kid who's a slot guy, you know, if they had enough wide receivers just outside the box, Xavier Leggett could play running back mm-hmm. because he's kind of like, I mean, he's not like Jaheim Bell because clearly he understands route concepts and can run routes and he he catches it, but he's 6'1", 200-plus pounds and really – electric with the ball in his hands and you know i thought he did a great job you know running those little end arounds that they had for jalen brooks but you know as great as it is jc to have spencer rattler and juice wells back you have not replaced josh van or jalen brooks and you know the thing you love about dylan johnson over the course of his three years at Mississippi State, I think he caught up about 140-something passes. Mm-hmm. And nobody at South Carolina has 140 career receptions. Maybe Juice Wells uh, counting James Madison in mm-hmm. this year. Uh, but, you know, so South Carolina, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but – you know, as, as great as it is to get Rattler and Wells, those guys need to be surrounded because guess what? Teams are going to be game planning for Juice Wells next year. I think yeah, he's not an unknown who, who quantity. Else is yeah, up? right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's not. He's no longer an unknown quantity. And you know, I don't know. We went through that with uh, you know during the Mike Bobo year. <laughs> Having only one well, receiver, not, not, but you know they yeah. got a lot more than than that. They got they yeah, that, that's that true. Year. It's that, yeah, the cupboard's that not that there. Like, wow, <laughs> Z- I'll put it this way: Xavier Leggett was the number two receiver on that team. 
on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Until he got hurt. And then Muschamp never mentioned it. Everybody's going, well, he just must not be very good. And then all of a sudden, Bubba's like, oh, yeah, he's a good player. So, unfortunately, he's been out for the season for about six weeks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, 2020 <laughs> was a, a weird year. I mean, very weird. You know, Kevin Harris led the SEC in rushing. Jimbo won 10 games at Texas A&M. I mean, it was almost like an alternate universe. I mean, look, I'll say this, and I I said this at the time, JC. I think, obviously, NIL is a part of it, but I still think the fact that you hired an offensive coordinator, and I've I've gone on record as saying I think Dowell Loggins is infinitely more qualified than Marcus Siderfield was. But I think in recruiting and with skill players, you've essentially kicked that can down the road because what film are you throwing on of Dowell Loggins? The 2017 Chicago Bears? I mean, I don't think uh, you want to uh, throw uh, that up. Yeah, no. <laughs> and – you know, I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm just saying there's still doubt that can be used against you in recruiting, right? Because you can you can say, well, hey, we're going to run some, a lot of the same concepts we ran against Tennessee and Clemson and Notre Dame in the first half until a moron took over the play calling in the second half. <laughs> And that's good, but, hey, Jalen Brooks is gone. And, you know, so is Josh Van, who, other than Juice Wells, was definitely the second best wide receiver on the team the second half of the season. And Eddie Lewis, to me, is a Josh Van replacement. He's probably a guy you can move around, and he's a punt returner, uh, and he's an older guy. And I think he would be a great fit. You know, you got to survive Deion Sanders. I mean, there's no telling how high that dude is right now. And I'm not just talking about in the mountains in Colorado either. But, I mean, to me, it's, it's it's concerning. Now, I'm not at practice every day. None of us are. So we don't really know what they think about some of these other guys like Kalik Orton, Landon Sampson, Peyton Mangrum, Omega Blake. I mean, my guess is as much hunting as they've done in the transfer portal, they realize they're probably not ready. And I mean, I'm not trying to paint a grim picture. I mean, I think Trey Knox is probably better than Anybody you had outside of Nate Atkins at tight end, and he was not utilized until the last three games of his career. Uh, I love Joshua Simon. I mean, hell, maybe he's a wide receiver. I don't know. Um, I love those guys. You know, Reed McKeska, there's a lot to like about him. There's a lot to like about Kelton Henderson and Elijah Caldwell, you know, NC State. They've conceded on that one. That's just a matter of time. But, again, none of those guys are going to be in until some are the high school guys. Yeah, I don't agree that Loggins is a problem in recruiting at all. And and maybe it's just because I know kind of the money that's being put out out there. Uh, Just like I don't think that Garrett Riley is going to be some boost for Clemson uh, on the recruiting trail, particularly in state. There were some fans that were – said, well, now that they got Garrett Riley, I guess Cam Pringle and Josiah Thompson and Blake Franks are all going to go to Clemson. And, you know, Blake Franks still may, but that was the way when Brandon Streeter was the quarterback. I mean, look, I know high school coaches that know Brandon Streeter. There's not a Clemson coach that was more respected or that did a better job of going to his schools and building relationships with the mm-hmm. high school coaches than Brandon Streeter. Yeah, he's and really good. <laughs> relationships take time. Like Garrett Riley's not coming in and all of a sudden replacing that three year relationship a guy's had with Brandon Streeter. Now, I mean, look, 
he was the Broyles Award winner as the assistant coach of the year, right? The top offensive coordinator. You know, TCU's offense was prolific until uh, they met that steaming steam in the locomotive uh, called Georgia's defense. Which, by the way, we hadn't talked about that, but I thought TCU lost that game before it was ever played because you could tell their players were scared to death. Like, even on the first play of the game, that receiver kind of hesitated and winced. I mean, J.C., I think they were so tight you couldn't have drove a 10-penny nail up their ass with a sledgehammer. I mean, <laughs> it looked they, like they, it. Just, they just had no chance, oh. and, and they gave Max Duggan no – chance uh i mean it's really like a season of survivor him getting through uh four quarters of that game without being decapitated or dismembered they uh yeah just georgia like i said i i thought going to the game i was like well tcu was just as fast as michigan right or, or a little faster really Georgia's just as big as Michigan, but Georgia's faster than TCU. So, I mean, you got those monsters running around at you. I mean, they, like I was sitting there talking earlier about who the Bears should take with the with the, the top pick, and I, I've been kind of on the Will Anderson bandwagon for a while, but the more I think about it, the more I think Jalen Carter may be more rare. I mean, that may be the way to go if you're the, the monsters of the midway, so to speak. I mean, I can see that dude in 10-degree weather just – causing all kinds of problems. So, uh, yeah, that's it there, too. Uh, well, Keith, uh, Gamecock women's basketball team, and this will be we'll, – we'll touch on this since we, we don't really talk about it as much as we probably should, but I know you're all immersed with it. You know, I know the Gamecocks won last night by 31 over Missouri. I think outside of beating Kim Mulkey's team, that probably gives – you and the fams a lot of satisfaction, <laughs> uh, you know, because they're – uh, I don't know. I've always thought they were kind of trashy out there at Missouri. Um, well, but to uh, your thoughts the, on the single loss from last year? The, too, the single <laughs> loss from last year. But your your thoughts on the season so far? How it's kind of come together? Um, expectations moving forward. Well, I mean they're undefeated. You know they have the, <laughs> I think thir- thirty five game home win streak. Um, you know, they just beat Missouri. I think they're 17 and 0 or 18 and 0 now, which runs their win streak to 24 or, you know, whatever it is. Um, I, honestly, this is the deepest and most talented team of the Dawn Staley era. I mean, honestly, to like the 11th or 12th player on this roster they can all play and most of them are mcdonald's all americans uh in fact i think the only player on the roster that's not a mcdonald's all american uh may be olivia thompson Hmm. i'm not for certain on that but i know it's a lot and you got the reigning national player of the year I think here's the issue is South Carolina outside of the Stanford game and the UCLA game, they've really not been challenged. And they're probably not going to be challenged until next month when they play at Connecticut, when they play LSU with Angel Reese, who – Right now is probably the front runner for SEC Player of the Year because her stats are bigger than Aaliyah Boston's because Boston only plays about 20 minutes a game because the game's out of hand and because you're also trying to get Camila Cardoso uh, and Ashlyn Watkins, who had a career game yesterday and scored, I believe, 13 points. You know, point guard, you didn't know. I think we see now Raven Johnson is really coming on. I don't know that Don Staley will tinker with the starting lineup, but, you know, Victoria Saxton 
she plays she starts every game she averages about 10 or 11 minutes a game she starts the game she doesn't finish the games she's not in at crunch time in any games uh, because there are more talented combinations that Dawn Staley can use and I think this team needs to be challenged prior to the NCAA tournament at Connecticut I hope Connecticut's completely healthy for that game win or lose at Tennessee they probably have as much talent in their first six or seven as anybody in the league outside of South Carolina I hope they get challenged you know, I think Kim Mulkey, you know, she's got LSU playing great. She got some excellent transfers, and they continue to play well. And, you know, Simone Augustus was a great player for LSU, J.C., but you never heard her mentioned until Aaliyah Boston started threatening her double-double uh, record and consecutive games with a double-double. And now they put a statue out in front of the arena of Simone Augustus. And I'm going to tell you why they did it was because there's, there, there has been, for the last couple of years, a statue of Asia Wilson outside of Colonial Life Arena. And every recruit that comes in sees that, including 2024's number one player in the country, Jelani Cambridge, who visited South Carolina over the weekend. And LSU is recruiting her, Tennessee, UConn, Stanford, everybody. Joyce Edwards, they're kind of 1A and 1B from Camden. She's six foot two. And so I think the result of other players getting statues is the result of Asia Wilson statue because it's just like facilities in football. You better have it if you want to compete for the top players. And I think that's just, you know, a result of what Dawn Staley has built at South Carolina. I could see some, some like a like a daggum statue, a certain, it's like a statue garden uh, <laughs> over time with this program, honestly. I could see that happening. Um with the women's team, the women's basketball statue. Maybe if they build, build a new arena, that's a, that's because I got to move the Asia Wilson statue over there. Right. I mean, All I, right, Keith, go ahead, let me go say ahead. this and then I'll go. Cause I should have said it. The biggest difference from last year to this year is Zia cook is having her best year. Last year, she averaged about 11 points a game and shot 33 or 34 percent. She's averaging almost 16 points a game this year, and she's shooting about 45%. And she really, you know, she has been responsible for just blowing some of these teams out by making two or three threes in a row. And that's something she could not do last year. And so I definitely want to give her uh, credit. She's having a fantastic senior season. Absolutely. Keith Alsep with Locked on the Game Cox podcast joins us every Monday. We're going to come up with a name for this segment, like Keeping It Real with Keith, like something like that. I don't know. We've got your little intro uh, worked up too, man. But we appreciate it, bud, and uh, looking forward to talking again next Monday. Hey, JC. Thanks. It's uh, it's good to see you back and uh, getting adjusted after the vertigo. I've been through that. I know what that's like, and uh, sucks for people for people that don't know. Uh, you don't really want to know because <laughs> it's just like uh, having the worst hangover you've ever had multiplied times ten, and having it on a daily basis when you're not drinking at all. Yeah. So you don't get the fun prior to the <laughs> the hangover. You just get you just get the nausea and uh, either the room or the bed spinning. Yeah, I'd rather just have the uh, I'd rather just drink. <laughs> just like, you know, I, th I think we I all would. Dr drinking actually made it a little better. I, I actually my eyes sort of I, the room wasn't spinning quite as much, or maybe 
maybe it was spinning and I was just like used to, I don't know, but it was weird, but I'm better now. New meds and uh, that got me right. So we appreciate you, Keith. All right, brother. Y'all have a good Pretty one. Good, man. Thanks, Keith. Keith. Keeping it real with Keith Alsep each and every Monday right here on Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Phil, I know we're overdue for a break. Let's do it to it, and we'll be back after these messages. Hey, man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues, and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. Oh, I feel that, man. My head hurts, but I have a good lead on a good idea. I'm calling your boy Matthew Odom today from Heritage Digital. Heritage Digital is an IT firm that specializes in making sure your IT network runs like a dream. If you have one or 500 employees, it doesn't matter. They do it all for one monthly fee and have clients from South Carolina all the way to California. Yeah, I heard that monthly fee's low too, so I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Uh, do you have 843 699 one zero zero one is Matt's contact number. Yeah, man, I sure do that. Or you can go to heritagedigital.com. Man, I hear they do a no cost assessment. Boy, this will help me. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I'm getting on that and encouraging everyone else to do the same. Heritage Digital, 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com. A proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. You can't handle the truth. Gamecock Nation, do you need a place to stay for the big game? Many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you support inside the Gamecocks, still earn your hotel loyalty points, and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel. Whether you are visiting Columbia to cheer on Carolina or hitting the road to follow the team, get in the stands with Fan Plans. Yep, time to get back to the show. Shoot. All right, my man. <laughs> Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show brought to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give them a call to talk about potential sunroom addition for your home. That way you can get out and enjoy all this beautiful sunshine that we're having, especially today, but without having to freeze your ass off. It's 803-446-4662. Give John and his team a call. They'll be happy to help you and give you $500 off. If you mention that you heard it here, if you decide to go with the project with Absolutely. Uh, okay, so Keith is telling the truth. NL has to be better. It's going to happen. 76, going back to that subject, Ray Tanner, Chance Miller, must stand up and dive into the NL, NL thing and make sure all hands are on deck because right now we're struggling to land guys and losing guys, even, even as Beamer recruits well. Yeah, and it's just certain guys. It, it was not – my concern was last year in the football portal, you didn't hear much about NIL. Uh, but the basketball portal, which was, a, what, four or five months later, Phil? Yeah. Nothing but NIL. You know that kid Lamont Paris is supposed to bring with him from Chattanooga that went to Gonzaga? That was 100% NIL. Um, it's just how it is right now. And, and to Chance's credit, and, and I haven't – you know, I, I think Ray may have been a little bit slow to adapt with it. Um, to Chance's credit, he's always worked on it, you know, and um, – I think the Park Avenue thing, you know, they were trying to get that off the ground first. And then, you know, it's just one of those things. Uh, it's nobody's big fault. Um, uh, and I don't know, even if there was another athletic director here, that there would have been more success with it early. But I think people are starting to kind of realize, you know, what needs to happen and, and all that good stuff. And that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Quantrell's keys telling the truth and it else got to be better. That's true. Craig says, that's why I joined, which I can give more dude. You're giving plenty. Um, yeah. <laughs> of course we'll always take more, we'll always take more. Right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, I, yeah, people that give five bucks, I treat them the same as people that give a hundred bucks a month or, or whatever. Um, you just, with your membership, you know, that those guys that give, you know, four or five, 600 bucks a month, you know, they may get assigned baseball and, you know, the latest gear for free, you know, sometimes and stuff because you got to take care of those guys too, uh, because they are given that much, but I'll, I'll, you know, that's why we do special little things for everybody. Um, 76 says he's going to give more too. Once he gets things squared away, I agree. Take your time, buddy. Um, also talking about Newberry and at least a lead. Yeah. Playing against Georgia and Clemson is a lot different than anything on Newberry's schedule. I say that with tons of respect for the young man. Yeah, that's true. But you know, sometimes the level of competition, 
it, it depends on the player if it matters or not. I think running backs, it's a lot easier to kind of go from one level to the other. Uh, if you think about the number of freshman running backs that have come in from the high school level and performed really well, uh, the D2 level is probably a little tougher than high school. Probably a lot tougher than high school. Yeah, um, yeah. but it's not and, like and you're I, talking about a, a left tackle, you know, having to make an adjustment. Yeah, having yeah. to make a, <laughs> kind of a speed adjustment. So I, I feel pretty good he can do it. Um, you know, the kid from Missouri last year, Corey Schrader, was a well, D2, D3 All-American at Truman State. Home of Harry S. Truman, I guess. Is that right? <laughs> the Maybe the Truman's the – Truman is the Missouri Tiger mascot. A more original Tiger than the Clemson Tiger. That's a copy of a copy of a copy. <laughs> Krieger says, Carol should look at it. Lavoisier is a blessing in disguise. If Carolina doesn't get Dylan Johnson, go take what's yours and ball out. That's true. Um, Saunders says, how does – oh, I forgot to ask Keith. How does he feel about Dowell Loggins versus Bobby Petrino? Uh, I am the late says it exactly. I don't know how I'm being used harder sell, especially for a transfer. Honest to God, man, when there's a number on the table from one school that's all the way across the country and the school closer to home can't quite get it, that's in the conference you grew up dreaming of playing in, it has nothing to do with the offensive coordinator and usage. Nothing. Not a single thing. Not a single thing. Uh, and, and it's unfortunate because all the things that we used to believe were, were kind of your decision makers as far as football recruiting goes, it's now different, uh, you know, and, and now within the scope of these different decisions, you know, some value money over others. And um, so I get it. I, I get it. I, and he wouldn't, the, the money he was talking that, that I heard on him was not crazy, like boy band money, you know, it was a lot less than some, Lesser running backs have gotten, in my opinion. Um, so I and, and I'll say this too: it's like a proven fact that Dowell Loggins has been a net positive in recruiting for this program since in the short time he's been here. I mean, look at all the guys. Look, he's look, look at all the guys he's gotten, but the guys he's kept. Yeah, it's the so retention for me that really bears that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Charles says. Um, any word on Harbor, Pringle, Jeffco? Nothing on Harbor. I know we're going to be asked about that every day, so keep the Harbor questions coming. Uh, Pringle, really, really, really good chance for the Gamecocks. Uh, Jeffco, even better. So two of the three, as Meatloaf says, Phil, what's, what does Meatloaf say? That's right. Two out of three ain't bad. Three. Right. You know, so we got that. Stanford just got spanked by Southern Cal. Yeah, and women's. Women's butt, women's winger. Keith, Keith in it real with Keith Allstep. Keith Keystone Light presents Keith Allstep Stone. That would be a <laughs> killer sponsor segment. Like Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. Keith Stone. <laughs> uh, I like keeping it real with Keith. That's pretty cool. Uh, 76 is I really do hope Lavasse steps up and develops this offseason. I think he can be very successful. He's If he's hungry enough. To me, it depends on him. Yeah, he's been working hard. It's just adjusting, getting the mental part of it down is what I've been told. Uh, Quantrell says, JC, what does Carolina have to do to get Darla Moore on our side with NIL? Keep in mind with Darla Moore, she's never really given to athletics. Yeah, she's always just been given to the academic academic side. Yep. Uh, Feels like if Carolina taps into that reserve, the program would shoot to the moon. Yeah. Well, well, look, I'm going to say this. You need enough NIL money. You don't. You don't need to be going out though and paying guys crazy, crazy, crazy money, like uh, like that Florida situation. That that that's never going to work. You know, your your players are never going to develop. They have no motivation. So, let everybody pay for all the five stars they want. They're ne- and then in a year they're going to be basically three stars because they didn't develop. You know, very few guys, even at the five-star level, don't have any development to do whatsoever. Um, so I hope people realize that, 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 you know, even if Carolina somehow found $50 million a year for NIL, right? Number one, you don't spend that all, all of that. Number two, you probably don't want to tell anybody that, you know? <laughs> uh, right. Kids will be demanding all kinds of craziness. 
Uh, and number three, if you spend all of that, you're going four and eight, I guarantee you. I don't care how many top ten recruiting classes you sign. You bring one of those A&M style classes that cost that much and you sign that check, you sign that, that tab you got at the end of the night, it, look out. Things ain't going to go that well on the way home. I'm going to tell you, you're going to go through a checkpoint. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, no, that, yeah, that is, that, that's not football, folks. It's not football. Um, and uh, and we'll see. I mean, I can't wait to see what kind of dumpster fire Miami is in a couple of years. It's already bad. And now your, your, your answer down there is to go buy more players? Great. Yeah, that's right. Just double down. Yeah, yeah just double down on it, bro. <laughs> double, double down, double down. <laughs> So uh, that's the deal there. All right, we got a little more in the Nana Sports chat box to catch up with. We're going to take our final break. Uh, it's been a great Monday here on Inside the Game Cox's show. Back after these messages. If you're looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of Remax at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at remax.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at remax.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Game. Gamecocks. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. What's up, Gamecock fans? This is Pitcher Noah Hall. If you want some delicious food for your event, I suggest visiting nanasports.com today to find out what they all have to offer. It's really good southern cuisine based out of Charlotte, my hometown. I hope you guys go check it out. Go Cox and go Nanas. I've been expecting you, Mr. Powers. Sometime in the near future, there's a good chance I'll move back to my home area of the upstate of South Carolina. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody I would use to help me find a new home except Cindy Bass Searfoss of Caldwell Banker Kane, located in my hometown of Spartanburg, Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a diehard Gamecock. 864-414-5271. Give Cindy a call. 864-414-5271. A proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. I Help Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and I Help Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it. Let them find it. These folks are incredible. IHelpConsulting.com. How can I help you? Hey, Mo Kaba here from the Carolina Gamecocks. You're listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. All right. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show brought to you by Express Sun Rooms in Columbia. Give them a call, 803-446-4662 to discuss a potential backyard retreat for your home. They'll be happy to talk to you. Tell them you heard it here. They'll give you a little discount. John Barber, big Gamecock supporter, so let's keep all the support within the family here, in the family. So, you know, JC, I was thinking, you know, these uh, Marcus and the uh, Nanosport chat box. I don't like how Oregon's doing business. I guess you could probably say the same thing from FSU if you're a Carolina fan. Um, obviously, NIL... NIL, I can't talk or I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Monday, I gotta get myself up for a month. I didn't even Somebody's have a crazy got a case of the No, oh, I did. Was, oh God, don't even go there. <laughs> Somebody's got a case of the Mondays, Phil. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you'd get your ass beat for saying that around here. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got a case of the Mondays. All right. But it's like, you know, thinking about I mean, obviously NIL plays a, a part of that, but like I think with Jordan Birch is the one that I really thought about this. So it's go kind of going back to what we said about Riley going to Clemson. Like, okay, if you if you got a tough road to hoe in the SEC and you're an up and coming coach trying to get you a head coaching position, or would you take a uh, a known quantity in the ACC playing against you know equal, I would say, competition as you did moving from the Big Twelve. How much of a draw does that play in it? Like for Jordan Birch, it was like, hey, come play in the Pac-12 where 
you're going to have a bit mm. easier uh, <laughs> situation than you will going up against, you know, future NFL stars every freaking week. Yeah, that uh, and not only that, but we'll give you fifty grand or however much. I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you all yeah, this too. Um, the uh, yeah, it's just a shame. Um, it's really a shame he left, right? Because yeah. uh, he's a guy that a lot of people have done a lot for since he came to Carolina. Um, but yeah, I, I think that the path of and see the path of least resistance. It sounds crazy to say, like, well, you know, because you'd think, well, NFL scouts know that this guy, you know, struggled in the SEC and then, you know, dominated the Pac-12. They don't care. Uh, They don't look that far back because their thing will be, well, he got better at Oregon and here's what he did at Oregon. And uh, they follow Jordan Birch because of his measurables and his hype coming out of high school. And if you're Jordan – and you go out there and kill it. I think he's got a long way to go <laughs> uh, to be a dominant uh, edge player in, in in any league in college football. I think he was very average for the SEC this year. Uh, one of Carolina's better players, but I think Carolina was pretty average at the end, uh, to be honest. Um, if he goes out there and kills it, he'll still he'll, he'll improve his draft stock. So I, I think that's a very interesting uh, and probably accurate take on that, Phil. And I bet you it's uh, – because everybody kind of usually thinks, oh, well, guys are going to go to the bigger leagues to do whatever. Um, some guys, though, maybe want to put a little bit better film on – a little bit better play on film. Um, I don't know if that's what Jordan's mindset was, but I think it's a perfectly plausible explanation. Yeah, I just uh, think and, it's and I, a – you know, yeah. the multifaceted side of the decision-making process, you know, the people that are on his, you know, you, I mean, you just be kind of silly not to think that. I mean, you know, it's it, and and the reverse is true. It's like for Spencer Rattler, it's like, you know, okay, you know, hey, stay one more year in this league and shine like you did in the last, you know, two or three games, and then, you know, sky's the freaking limit. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm with you there. Ryan in the Nana Sports chat box says, good afternoon, J.C., one thing I wanted to ask, how we are doing developing players? Is it more on the coaches or the players? We seem to have trouble with some of the fundamentals, like tackling, running, good routes, all that good stuff. Well, kind of depends on the position. you know. And keep in mind, these guys have only been here two years. I've seen literally a ton of guys get a whole lot better year to year. Um, tackling, I think you ask a lot of college, college coaches, and they're like, tackling's a lost art, so to speak. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, but, again, it depends on the position because, like, you look at Nick M. and Warren and D.Q. Smith, I mean, and really the whole secondary since Torrey and Gray's been here, you know, he's gotten everybody better. Everybody. I know Marcellus Dial has some up and down games, and he, he had a down game in the Gator Bowl. But he had an up game against Clemson. Um, I, I, I think that spot's one thing. I think at linebacker, they just have to get better overall. Uh, I, I think the D line as a whole, and I'm talking edge, which is Sterling, Sterling Lucas, Lucas's group, and tackle, which is Jimmy Lindsay. It always in the two years these guys have been here, I think they got them better last year, got them better this year, but it always seems like they're about 85 percent of how yeah. good you really think they could be. Uh, receiver, I don't know. I don't know if anybody has problems with route running except Jaheim Bell. Uh, <laughs> And I'll say this, uh, you know, Keith mentioned Josh Van. I mean, that guy led the SEC in drops, you know, just, what, two or three years ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's 2019, and he's come along. I mean, Justin Stepp has gotten everybody better that, that's played at that position. I share Keith's concern about that spot because I think you need more more guys that are your game breakers, so you need something to step up. But I don't have a problem with that, with, with the coaching – Coach, coaching at running backs, I don't know. Uh, and then coaching at quarterbacks, you know, it, it's been difficult to kind of uh, figure out how much better Luke Doty's actually gotten, but I do know he's better. Um, and I think Dowell Loggins will continue to develop there. So if you go position by position, uh, and I think a bunch of the offensive linemen individually have gotten better. Um, and then 
Lonnie Teasley did a good job stepping in. So, you know, we'll see. I, I, I think that when you talk about player development, I kind of like to judge staffs after they've been here about three years and you start seeing guys that, like, weren't going to play, go to the NFL, like, across the board. Uh, or you see guys that never quite get there. Like, I, I'll give this staff a lot of credit for Darius Rush. I'll give the previous staff credit for getting him here. But Darius Rush was not a guy on anybody's radar <laughs> before he uh, – <laughs> before this staff got here, right? Jalen Foster, uh, everybody groaned because he was a starting safety. He had an All-American year, you know, in the last year. So, you know, I'd say overall there's some some t- examples of, of of player development that are very positive, but you got to kind of wait. Stone Cold takes from Austin with Keith also. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Marcus says, any word are we going to switch from Under Armour? That's not something people are discussing right now. Um I hope so one day, and I wouldn't be surprised if they make a, a run at Jordan Brand. Craig says, can you explain Park Avenue and what's holding it up? Um, it's not being held up. They had to, like, not do it for the university. Yeah. So it's got to become its own thing. And there's some there's paperwork, due diligence, reestablishment, all that business stuff that they have to take care of. Um, Craig, Jim says, uh, where do you think we stand in the portal? Not Sunshine Bumpa, but I feel like we're getting a little too upset. Still feel like we've gained more than we've lost. Am I wrong? It kind of depends on how I think how running back shakes out. Because although Marshawn Lloyd, you know, kind of a fragile running back, if you will, uh, and the Jaheim Bell was basically your number two back, I guess. Um, if they don't, if they don't have back, if you look at this, this team next year and go. Man, they really need good running backs because they don't have many. Uh, then I think you can kind of bring it into question. I think that as far as, uh, you know, what they actually lost and how they've replaced it or whatever, I, yeah, I don't know. I think I think as far as true tight ends go, they've upgraded. They didn't lose anybody at receiver out of the portal. Um, if they get Jeff Coat, I, I, you know, and – Look, Jordan Burch may be a top 10 pick from Oregon next year. Jeff Coat may just still be Jeff Coat, but right now, Jeff Coat's the better player. Right. He's better. He's more proven. He's better. But, I mean, I, I could care less where Jordan Burch was ranked. I care less where Jeff Coat was ranked in high school. That was high school. Uh, you know, like I said, most likely to succeed, you don't hand them a medical certificate and say, go operate on my mom. <laughs> high school. That's how much high school matters, folks. Uh, it's like clerks. You're carrying a torch for a court torch for a girl you met in high school. High school. <laughs> um. So yeah. So that's it. But I I think it's it's probably about even. Just eyeballing it, and a lot depends on how some of these guys uh, step up. You know, I don't. I don't know that I. I don't know that there's a player in the in the portal class right now that I'm like. I felt like 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 Juice Wells, or like Spencer Rattler because I knew he's going to be the starter. But that was it. Uh, John says one way to hook Darla Moore into athletics might be to make stipends for business majors or international business majors available for student athletes. That's a great, that's a great gig, John. I'm going to start doing something with Carolina Rise, too, that's like real, real small dollar stuff, um, like uh, bundling some things or something, where, where you folks that live in a certain area or you're from a certain area, like if you're from Spartanburg or Greenville or Anderson, uh, we get the, you know the kids on the roster from there. You can give directly to you know Carolina Rise eight six four or Carolina Rise eight zero three or something like that. I think that'll be a neat. That's down the road a little bit. And then we're gonna have, of course, we'll have some T-shirts <laughs> that say Carolina Rise seven zero four and all that good stuff. So it'd be good. Uh, Seventy six says he loves office space. Uh, Melwer says, do our weaker linebackers make our ends look weaker? I don't know which you know. The end has to has to set the edge, right? And, and that's the bottom line. That has much to do with the linebacker. But, uh, you yeah, know, I don't know. I, I, I think the ends were average and had some above-average moments as it relates to the rest of the SEC. So that's the deal there. Um, Crager says losing Boykins to Charlotte. Yeah, I'm surprised Boykins hadn't played more up there unless he – Started getting into the and the kid that went to LSU at linebacker heard enough. Yeah, I think Colby Fields is going to be missed because they were like 
they thought they knocked it out of the park with that kid. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. Hey, Red, stop. Hey, Red. Stop. Okay. Reds. Mike Jones says, hey, y'all, I usually have to listen to the replay of the show because of work, but I'm currently on a cruise in the Mexican Riviera representing the Royal USC on the West Coast. I just want to say I love your show, Mike. That's amazing, Thanks, brother. Mike. Yeah, man. Chilling in the Mexican Riviera. Woo-hoo. Way to go. Uh, Marcus says, what can you tell us about Omega Blake and that other kid that played at the small school? I think Omega Blake needs to get a lot better, um, but he did see some playing time in the bowl game. Uh, Kyle Horton is going to be really good. Uh, I just don't know when. Um, how long, you know, because he's already been through practice. He got a lot better during the – but, you know, can he get out there in a game? And we'll find all that out. We'll find, but, I mean, dude, the dude's 6'4 and runs 4'5, good route runner, all that good stuff. So, uh, 76 is very happy, even thankful to have Jeff Coat coming and replacing Birch. Jeff Coat just seems to have that dog in him. That's how he was described to me. He's like, he's a dog. Yeah, nasty. That's how Brad Crawford is. Yeah. leave the state. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a nasty player. They, they need a little nasty on that D-line, man. Yeah, they do. I mean, I think I think with Birch and Pickens both, and, and Pickens got there this year. Uh, if those guys play, if they were a little more nasty. Uh, I think the D line would have been a little better, and I have no doubt Boogie Huntley's nasty, and Taka Hemingway's nasty, and T.J. Oh, Sanders yeah. and Nick Baird are, are nasty. Mm-hmm. And Jordan um, Strawn so wouldn't help if he plays like that too. Just like you know, yeah, when he's Strong's getting after the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so if you can line up Strawn and if your edge or starting edge is Strawn and um, and uh, Jeff Coat, uh, and then look, I'm gonna tell you this right now. You know, it, it's tough tough sledding in the SEC uh, to start freshman defensive ends, but you can rotate them in. I mean, Desmond Umiazulu and Montague Rames, if they're the next two. You know, I, I don't know. I, every time I ask about Terrell Dawkins, it, it's it's the the feedback is not amazing. Um, but hopefully he gets it back together and and all that, and maybe they move somebody to edge or find another one post spring. Uh, Marcus says I'm originally from Aiken, but live in Charlotte. Can't wait to play the Tar Heels at Bank of America. Yeah, I'm leaning towards maybe doing a uh, an event around that game. So. Just going to let you guys know. It's going to be a meet and greet with me and Phil. We're going to be signing autographs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're not going to be signing autographs. We won't Don't charge you for them, though. I'll take a picture with people, though. I mean, I've actually oh, yeah, yeah. I've done that before. Well, I don't take pictures with people, but uh, I'm not signing anything. <laughs> identity theft. <laughs> I'm paranoid about identity theft. Anyway, Craiger says we well, really missed Strawn's quick twitch on the line. Uh, man, we have a Carolina bar on Mint Street. I know. Mm. Um, I'm. T- I think maybe a tailgate, or maybe a maybe a maybe we could rent out the bar or the day. I don't know. I got a lot of ideas. I got a lot of ideas. A lot depends on kickoff time too. Uh, we'll, show, we'll we'll get that kickoff time months in advance, though, so that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be planned um, early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lance says, "Oh yeah, let's do snap. Can't wait. Yeah, we'll have some lattes, Lance." Yeah, man. Um, 76 says, get Umi, Azula, and Rams on the field early and often. They'll be talented enough to at least hold their own while getting their feet wet. I agree. And, and keep yeah. in mind, those two are having – they get spring practice, too. That's big for those two guys. So, that's big. Uh, and Lance says, I'm going to be there with a cold Dowell will log in. All right. We are at the end of the show. Thanks, that, Keith. Also, a lot of the Gamecocks podcast for joining us. Hey, guess what? guess what's coming back next week, guys? Or tell me tomorrow. The Mental Edge with Sawyer. That's Nicks. right. The Mental Edge. Sawyer's back tomorrow. The Mental Edge. Mental Edge. So looking forward to uh, uh, doing that. Game got fan Tanner Bailey. I, I, there's no word other than they're very impressed with him and he hasn't hit the portal. <laughs> That's kind of my thing about all the quarterbacks. <laughs> you know, they like him at the quarters. But uh, – Jim says, I don't mind the Charlotte games coming in from Philly, flying for the game. Fly home. Yeah, that's an easy flight, too. Yeah, that's a It's an easy, easy flight, flight from Chicago mm-hmm. as well. So we got lots of irons in the fire about that. And uh, one thing I really want to do, because uh, I had such a good time at Kentucky this year and wish I'd have gone to the bowl, is get out and meet you guys more often. And so the show will hit the road some. And we got some other exciting things coming up, too. So anyway, 
For Phil Mullinax, this is J.C. Sherbert that's been inside the Gamecocks of the show on Monday, January 16th. Everyone have a great Monday. We'll talk to you tomorrow.